It's a meat eater podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newharth, and today we're joined by Stephen Ranella, Giannis Putellis, Brody Henderson, Brent Reeves, Randall Williams, Corinne Schneider, Ronnie Bame, and Angela Perry. Ronnie, this is your first time on Meat Eater Trivia. How do you think you're going to do? I'm just shooting for the Shelby Index. Okay. I, I don't... After this went on about two months, uh-huh. I started getting worse and worse scores. Really? Yeah. I think cooking and conservation might be my weak spots. Uh-huh. So that's that's knocking you out of 50% of the questions. I nope. think the aspartame in that Diet Coke might be the weak spot. Now, I was going to ask if we could bring a beard here because then I would be more fluid. Uh-huh. No problem. <laughs> now, you got some nicotine in you between the podcast episode and trivia here. Right, right? Otherwise, you, I'd you have think just that, locked up. You think this that'll make you sharper then? That'll oh, yeah. help? Oh, okay. nicotine is definitely a stimulant. Oh, good, yeah. good. Angela well, also... Does it, know, does it let you know things you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm saying it's like, how does... Okay. I can see in the dark. You feel better, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's not... Oh, my bone to pick? Oh, well, not is yet. It, Angela, oh, okay. Angela, also your first time on the show. Steve is eager. Uh, he's been talking about it for hours. <laughs> Angela, first time on the show. Yeah. How do you think you're going to do at trivia that's hunting, fishing, conservation, cooking? And, uh... Under promise and over deliver. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's my motto for today. Good. I, I would imagine you have a lot of trivia in your brain. Uh, maybe not as much from these four categories, though. Do you think that's true? Well, we're, we're about to find out. Okay. Do you consume a lot of trivia in your, your personal life? I do. Highly competitive. Really? Like what? Um, you know, was a big Jeopardy person, trivial pursuit. Was or still are? Um, was. Okay. Yeah. What happened? I mean, Alex is gone. Really? You don't like Ken? Just went downhill from Mm -hmm. there. Okay. So, yeah. I think you'll do okay then. Oh, I I get it. Well, you had such a look on your face. Alex No, no, I was surprised that she would quit over the host. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Steve, arms crossed over here. Spencer died. Uh (laughs) I'd still be here. (laughs) (laughs) We're we're gonna straight up skip our stat. And our zero percent of this week, so we can address whatever this bone is. So go oh, ahead. No, it's what not. That, it's not that take that long. Oh, okay. Well, go, go you ahead. You know how you put trivia questions on the website? We we did for a little while. Oh, no, they're there right. now. Mm-hmm. Some of them. Well, the one I was, I wasn't here for it, so I just saw it. But it's so stupid. It's like mm. you had a trivia question about what Anthony Bourdain said to Oprah Winfrey. How like you, you're so far off in the cooking ones, anyways. <laughs> Go back to that gnocchi one. Did you get that one wrong or what? Well, no, because it's in his book. But at least tie it back to the book. Why tie it to like an interview with Oprah Winfrey? So it's a bad boy chef talks mm-hmm. to a daytime TV host, mm-hmm. and you feel that fits on meat eater trivia. Well, here's here's the sausage being made again. Uh, it was <laughs> I could we could then have Anthony Bourdain talking on the TV to which our YouTube audience could watch. Are you with me? Still stupid. <laughs> okay, that's 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 your whole bone. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was I was worried <laughs> there was it's, we had... it's a it's part of a broader bone. Uh huh. The cooking thing. Where you you have some that are so outside of. Mm-hmm. What was another one? What? Look, the, All it's been an ongoing problem. <laughs> like, what color are peppers? Uh-huh. You know, yeah. that's not as bad. Mm-hmm. That's not as bad. <laughs> as you me. One. There's a bunch of them. It's kind of like, sure. If it was a food trivia show, but uh-huh. I don't understand what Oprah Winfrey talking to a. To a TV, another T, a TV host talking to a TV host about butter has to, it just has nothing to do with anything. I think Boy, that, you're that's not going old. to like some of our questions. Today. That's a pretty <laughs> old one, though, isn't it, Spencer? Teaser. I feel like you've been kind of mm. staying, staying I, I, between the guidelines a little better. I upset lately. you every now and then, Brody. Yeah, it still happens. Yeah. And we have some housekeeping to get to. During a previous episode, Steve opined about Democrats being more likely than Republicans to believe in ghosts, that as a 2019 YouGov survey showed, it's actually the other way around. Their data proved that Republicans are more likely than Democrats to believe in ghosts, demons, and vampire. Vampires. Steve vampires. Then, <laughs> and vampires. Steve then said that he worried his other political profiling might be wrong, which is that Democrats are more likely than Republicans to be gluten intolerant. Well, a 2019 study by Michigan State University 
answered that exact question. Professors Trey Malone and Bailey Norwood surveyed over 1,000 Americans and asked them questions about their politics and their diet. Three of the questions were to establish a gluten aversion index, and one question was about who their favorite president was between Trump, Obama, Bush, and Clinton. Steve, before I reveal the results, do you have any final predictions about which president was the favorite among the gluten intolerant voters? Oh, Obama. Here's what the study showed. Respondents who were the most gluten avoidant said that their favorite president was Donald Trump. The oh. paper concluded that there's no evidence that the political left is more likely than the political right to have a gluten sensitivity. Well, that gets me in real trouble with someone. <laughs> so I told him that, and he said, Hon, that's true? Oh. Or that's you think that's true? And I said, no, it's true. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who is that person? Do you need to issue an apology to them? It was they... on the episode called um, "The Guru Comes" or the what? What the hell is it called? The Guru comes, comes up, up for, for air. air. The Guru okay. comes up for air. The paper did point out, though, that there are other dietary choices that go hand in hand with politics. For example, in 2012, Barack Obama won 77 percent of counties with a Whole Foods, but lost 71 percent of counties with a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> You don't have, say, you, have you ever seen? Have That's you ever seen shocking. Ian Frazier's thing about uh, voting trends and wild hog densities? Uh, I've heard you talk about it, but That's I amazing. haven't seen it myself. There's, there's a good correlation. Check. Oh yeah, yeah, very high correlation. Steve, you've now learned that Republicans are actually the party of gluten and ghost sensitivity. Do you have any other political stereotypes you'd like me to check in on? Well, next while, thing while you're, you're going to try to tell me is that Republicans really liked COVID restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we can go without fact-checking that one. One that I've noticed uh, kind of my whole life is it seems like blue states have slower speed limits than red states. Mm. Something I'm going to have to look into. Because of the nanny state. Because of the nanny state? Yeah. go. Yeah, okay. I got one for you. Okay. Look at kids wearing bike helmets. Are you, okay. <laughs> Way-ass blue state activity. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, Angela, do we respect Michigan State University and their studies? Does that does that check out? You think we're okay with the results? Yeah. Okay. What journal was it in? I've got a great joke. I can't in that tell you that joke that fits right into that topic. We're, we're going to move on from there. <laughs> if you want to go to tell you a joke, tell them later. <laughs> the Shelby Index for today's round is a three, so our winner should get six correct answers. And with that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, I need to you know what I stand to win. Everything. That wasn't an accident, no. Steve. <laughs> you stand to win everything. Game on, suckers! Question one. The topic is biology, and this will be multiple choice. And this first great question comes to us via Colin Sykes. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. Which of these animals has the longest gestation period? Cougar, muskrat, coyote, or caribou? Topic is biology. Which of these animals has the longest gestation period? Cougar, muskrat, coyote, caribou. Our players have been slow to answer. No one is looking confident. Cougar, muskrat, coyote, caribou. Mm. Brent, you were the quickest to answer. Is this, uh, is this confidence? Is it a guess? Do you not want to think about it any longer, so you're just going to come up with something? I went with my guts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you said you went with your was there an S plural in the with his guts I, I noticed <laughs> not just his gut he see, said see, he oh, can with multiple guts <laughs> okay uh, that's guys like that go a, with their gut they're just getting one opinion yeah. <laughs> you gotta get the whole thing does everybody have an answer for the longest the heart, gestation the period the like, cougars his, his stomach's like no oh, it's that does everybody have an answer yeah Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Angela saying oh, cougar, no. Ronnie saying caribou, Corinne saying muskrat, Brody saying caribou, Randall saying caribou, Yana saying caribou, Steve saying caribou, Brent saying caribou. A the correct can throw answer. Off three litters a year. I, but I mean, there's one that's like more obvious. But I. Uh, the correct answer 
is caribou. We're over here in the winter's, room. winter's corn. Pretty well. well. <laughs> a caribou's gestation period is 230 days. That's followed by cougar at 90 days, coyote at 60 days, and muskrat at 30 days. A general rule among mammals is that the larger the animal, the longer the gestation period. An extreme example is an elephant, which has a gestation period of 660 days, versus a mouse, which has a gestation period of 20 days. Does it have a name? Like a principle, I don't know. the name of that I principle. I haven't heard it. We can come up with one right now. The meat eater principle. It, it, yeah. They're an R species. What's that? An R species. What so does that mean? Yeah, but that just breaks the world slow, into two groups. Slow turn. Slow turn. But come up like, to your mic for us, please. Yeah, Steve just said it. It breaks okay. it into several groups. What's they the other just, one? There's R and P, or what is it? Uh, R and N. N. There's like yeah. high fecundity, low investment. Right. Low fecundity, high investment. Their turn is very slow, caribou. Question two, the topic is conservation. What conservation organization changed their magazine name to Covers in 2019? Oh, say that again? What conservation organization changed their magazine name to Covers in 2019? The question is behind you, Steve, if you need to see it oh. in front of you. Angela, what do we know about the gestation period of dire wolves? Do you think it was the same as a gray wolf? Yeah, hard to say. Probably. We don't know. Don't know. Okay. Yeah. Again, what conservation organization changed their magazine name to Covers in 2019? Hard. The room looks stumped. <clears throat> Not at all. Corinne, I think we're waiting on you. Oh, no, I, okay. I Ronnie, be quiet. Ronnie is helping out the room. <laughs> Brent, are you ready? Time. Yeah, I need somebody to repeat what Ronnie said. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> is everybody ready, Brent? I'm ready. Go ahead and reveal your answers. This was a bone I was throwing to Ronnie, which he was trying to give away. Angela says Nature Conservancy. Ronnie says Ruffed Grouse Society. Corinne without an answer. Brody uh, saying Ruffed Grouse yeah. Society. Randall saying Sierra Club. Giannis saying Pheasants Forever. Steve saying Quail Forever. Brent without an answer. The correct uh, answer is Ruffed Grouse uh, Society. Uh, damn it. Or the Ronnie American the Woodcock yeah, Society. Yeah, oh, what do you got? I got it. Oh. That but was that's the not bone. their name anymore. Was that his, was that his bone? They're, it's RGSAWS. the Rough Grouse Society or there's the American RGSAWS. Woodcock RGSAWS. Society. Right. The magazine used mm. to be called Rough Grouse Society, and before that it was called RGS, and before that it was called The Drummer. According to the group's president, those names didn't fully capture their cause, so they changed the name to Covers a few years ago. They said they, they work to conserve wildlife habitat in the form of cover, which benefits rabbits, deer, grouse, and more. Ronnie, that was the bone I was throwing mm. to you because Thanks. you do a lot of work with Ruffed Grouse Society. What do you like about what they got going on? Uh... A, a, oh, the the act of forestry and the uh, emphasis now on like getting the states and the federal governments or the federal forest, I don't want to say departments, whatever it is, they're getting a much stronger voice in active logging and act it's just needed. The, the forests are just way too old. Mm -hmm. And for years, it's been kind of a taboo thing. And they're really breaking through that, even down in the, in the Appalachians and uh Carolinas and stuff. They're really making a big change. So, Do you like the magazine name Covers? Do you feel like that was a good switch for them? I, I didn't think they needed it, but, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I don't uh, think that. The OG one they had of the drummer, <laughs> that, that seems perfect. I think yeah. they, they need to circle I don't think back they hit to there. Yet. It's, they're still not there. <laughs> I, the search continues, or should continue. <laughs> Coming from the founder of Meat Eater. <laughs> <laughs> question three, the topic is fishing. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Andrew Hakeem. For sending this great question, Andrew is going to get a book signed by Steve. Florida and blank were the only states in 2022 that had 1.5 million more fishing license holders than hunting license holders. Florida and blank were the only states in 2022 that had 1.5 million more fishing license holders than hunting license holders. You need to tell me what that other state is. Florida like and blank. 
They were the only states that sold that had 1.5 million more fishing is license holders. Is that 1.5 or question. more or 1.5 or like million? Actually, 1.5. Literally 1.5 million more. Come, there's no way that's literally true. Do you know what? I pound this okay. in my kids' heads. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like 1.52 and the other one's like 1.49. Are there, are, are there states that have 2 million more fishing licenses yeah, than like, hunting licenses? No, these, these would be the states with the most. They okay. have the, they have the okay. largest discrepancy at 1.5 okay, million. Okay, it could have been much better worded. Because uh, are there some with 1.7, 1.8, 2.1? There, 2. Are, 2. Not. there okay. are not. This is the most. That's, it's a, you know what? That's a good criticism. Good criticism. Here's the question again. Florida and blank were the only that, states like my heart rate goes down. in 2022. <laughs> that's, just that. that's all I'm after. That's Florida I'm after. and blank were the only states in 2022 that had 1.5 million more fishing license holders than hunting license holders. Does everybody have an answer? I don't like this question. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Randall hasn't complained yet. Randall, what do you think of this question? Do you have it right? I would have gone with what two states have the largest, how I would have thought about it, the uh, largest uh, discrepancy between hunters and anglers. I'll put it this way. I haven't had nearly so much of a problem with understanding what the uh -huh. question's asking. I yep. just have nothing to go on. Okay. You know? Does everybody have an answer? It's just a guess. I I've, I'm pretty sure I arrived at it as much as I dislike <laughs> the question. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Angela saying California, Ronnie saying Texas, Corinne saying Texas, Brody saying California, Randall saying California, Giannis and Steve both saying California, Brent saying Maryland. We have a correct answer in the room. It's California. A lot of correct players answers. did pretty well. Last year, both Florida and Texas had 1.7 million fishing license holders versus 200,000 hunting license holders. They were by far the biggest discrepancy in the country. The next closest states are Texas, Minnesota, and North Carolina, which have about 900,000 more fishing license holders than hunting license holders. Question four. The topic is hunting. This is a visual question to see what the room is seeing. Go watch this episode on Meat Eater's YouTube channel. I mean, look Here's at the prompt. Thing. This ancient dog breed that hails from Asia has a history of hunting wolves and leopards. Oh my God, my dad had one of these dogs and I can't think of it. This ancient dog breed that hails from Asia has a history of hunting wolves and leopards. You know this one? I mean, it has kind of two names, but... Okay. She's got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't suspect that would be the case. Would you mind showing me one of them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. This ancient dog breed that hails from Asia has a history of hunting wolves and leopards. You can see the photo of this dog on our YouTube channel. Did you have something to throw in, Angela? I take issue with ancient. Okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Modern, maybe. Does everybody have an answer? I think so. I don't. Randall, you're not going to come not up gonna with get one? There. No. Just put a question mark thing. I like, think, Duke. is this the one that like one of them sold for like an an insane amount of money. No, go, I mean, go ahead, because I don't know, so I, I welcome the <laughs> chit-chat. This might help, Steve. But generally, I do not like that kind of chit-chat. Now, Brody, your dad <laughs> had one of these. Before the answers are And you, you don't know what it is. Maybe it was. Man, it, I can't remember. I'll know when I hear the answer, but I don't have an answer. Ronnie, do you know this one as a dog guy? I recognize it. I I, I feel 50-50 that I I, I feel 50-50. I was 50 -50. chased by one of these. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is everybody ready? <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Angela saying uh, Tibetan Mastiff or Chow Chow. Ronnie chow saying Chow. chow. Corinne God. saying Chow Chow. Brody without an answer. Randall without an answer. Giannis saying Caucasian I Shepherd. I Chow, but I just spelled it wrong. <laughs> Steve, Steve spelled Chow Chow like shit to you. Damn it. Brent saying Akita. The correct answer is the Chow Chow. Mm. This side of the room did very well. Some sources mm. say the Chow Chow was domesticated about 3,000 years ago in Arctic <coughs> Asia. The Tang Empire, which ruled from 618 to 907, had a special relationship with the dog breed. Emperors of the Tang Dynasty had kennels made up of 25,000 Chow Chows, which they used for hunting, herding, guarding, and sled pulling. 
Angela, what other Man. fun facts can you share with us about the Chow Chow? Why isn't it an ancient breed? And did you hunt with one in Japan? Oh, no, because they're not from Japan. Okay. But- uh, <laughs> Might be time to place in a new question. <laughs> uh, um, there is one. There's some story. If you you Google it, if you Google it. There's a story. Like recently, some one sold for like an insane amount of money. Um, you know, that was like a breeder from a famous breeder or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so what we know about ancient dog breeds is that dogs that look ancient like genetically like mm-hmm. a chow chow that they look ancient and genetically are ancient what we would call a basal breed um, because they were geographically and culturally isolated so mm-hmm. all ancient breed dogs only appear ancient because they were in locations that had very little admixture and interbreeding with other types of dogs so they they have that kind of pure lineage that didn't have a lot of of mixture but they're not you know this dog is a mix of lots Mm -hmm. of things in ancient times i'm almost certain i was referencing one of your papers that called this a basal breed which Mm -hmm. uh, other sources then called an ancient dog breed so you'd say it is or is not an ancient dog breed ancient and the the most ancient ancient i tell people if you want an ancient dog the real most ancient unmixed dog is a husky or malamute or something Mm. like that followed very closely by um our recent genetic work on um uh what are they called carolina dogs you know carolina dog i do not know that Mm. one dog that kind of pulled out the swamps of the carolinas and are probably an ancient type of um american dog dogs brought here with first native americans and kind of got lost in the swamps of the carolinas and are now a primitive dog breed Almost like a dingo is in Australia. There's something interesting about all kind of like village dogs, right? They all look the same. They all look like dingoes, medium size, mm, kind right. of yellowish, some white patches, pricked ears, some semi curly tail. They all dogs converge into this look when they just kind of get mixy, right. mixed up, right? So, yeah. Question if five. You're, but just a quick question. What do you got? If you're wrong about so many parts of the question, at what point? <laughs> At what point is it? Does the question get scratched and we and we replace it? Question five. The topic is cooking. But you, know, but you can ignore it. But you, you, it can't be. It's like the question can't be ignored. My question can't be ignored. Was the question wrong, Angela? It wasn't from Japan, and it's not ancient. I never said it was from Japan. Oh. Yeah. I said it hailed from Asia. I was Asia. worried that when she was talking about hunting in Japan, she may bring up some of the Asian mm. breeds. This being mm-hmm. one of them. Yeah, I got you. We'll accept ancient. Thank Basil you. would be more correct. Question five, the topic is cooking. What organization started their annual awards show for chefs, restaurants, and authors in 1990? What organization started their annual awards show for chefs, restaurants, and authors in 1990? Fairly confident room, except for maybe Ronnie. What's the thing? So I don't there. see it. I can see it on. Oh. Oh. Should have had oh. a little more nicotine, maybe. Oh, there it's, it I just came I to him, think Steve. I got it. No. Maybe. Okay. Brody, is that a disgusted the look? Is that gasp. a confident oh, no, look? No, 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 no. I, like, put that. He breathed that. He was hiding something. in there. <laughs> Brody is deciding on something. Does everybody have an answer? No. That's fine. What organization? Started their annual award show ch- for chefs, restaurants, I don't want to turn a right answer into a wrong answer. In 1990. By writing down too much. But you don't want to leave a wrong answer as it is. <laughs> well, I don't know. What, we've gone through this where what is a wrong answer and what mm-hmm. isn't. I know. Is everybody ready? Brody, I think we're waiting on confirmation oh, from I, you. I don't want to add this. See how much fun this is? That's why I had to have Spencer play, so he could have some fun. Yeah, I'm, uh-huh. I mean, Angela, I, I like playing. Yourself? Next time yeah. I come out, I can't I'll remember. Sit there. I can't remember the name of this thing. There'll but, be yeah. Brody. Clear questions. Everyone has an answer. I think no, we're waiting. Not really, but yeah. Oh, that's Angela, what we're asking. Need more time. No, no, no. I'm okay. I can't Wait, remember no. that. Brody. Feel, feel okay. Like, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead Go and reveal. Your answers we have, oh, Angela. Beard. I was like, be- a be- something. Be- Ronnie saying James Beard. Corinne saying James Beard. Yeah. Brody saying James Beard. James Beard. I think they got it wrong. What'd you say? Everybody no, said no, James no. Beard. These guys don't have it. Give me the question. Don't they have it? 
what it's organization? what organization? Oh, sorry, you got it. Yep. The yeah. correct answer is the James Beard Foundation. If you just said James Beard, we will give it to you. That's what I was wondering about. The James Beard Foundation was created in 1986 by a former student of James Beard. The nonprofit is famous for their dinners, scholarships, and accolades. The awards show, which has been held in New York City and Chicago, is often referred to as the Oscars of the food world. Steve, you were nominated for one. Twice. Right? Twice. Not a winner, though? Nope. Was it, one was for The Wild Within. What was the no, other one I don't for? Think so. No? No. Meteor was nominated twice. Okay. Good on you. Phil, we are halfway through the game of trivia. Give us a scoreboard update. Oh, no. uh, everyone's doing pretty well. We've got uh, Angela, Corinne, and Brent, all with two points apiece. Giannis, Steve, and Randall have three points. And tied up in first place are Brody and Ronnie. With four Ooh, points. Ronnie. Wow. Damn. Now, does this, go, does this go to Steve's thing that the oldest guys in the room do better? Because it doesn't work when I play at home, Steve. Let me well, tell you. Might, but it might be because you got basically thrown two bones. <laughs> well, I, I thought, yeah, it, it could be. The nicotine and the aspartame. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be let me just light up a cigar right now. Yeah, I'll be, be making a donation be to done the Rough Girl Society. Yeah. <laughs> Question six, the topic is fishing. This next great question comes to us via Haley Adams. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at TheMeatEater.com. Yellowfin, West Slope, Rio Grande, Greenback, and Bonneville are all types of this fish. And you need to be specific. If you think the answer is Tundra Swan, then you need to write Tundra Swan. We don't have to make again. this personal, Spencer. Yellowfin, West Slope, Rio Grande, Greenback, and Bonneville are all types of this fish. I need you to be specific. Oh. I think confident. You, I think you room. could have made this more difficult. Yeah, I think so. I was not confident. I just oh. had a right. We will down. see how the players do. Waiting on Corinne and Yanni. Angela, how do you feel about fish? Do you know fish? Um, I'm good at fishing. Okay. Mm. Bold statement. <laughs> <laughs> now that she likes it, she's good. <laughs> Again, I need I you to I'm be good. specific for this or, answer. Oh, yeah. No. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal oh, no. your answers. We have Angela saying trout, Ronnie saying trout, oh. Corinne saying goldfish. Brody and Randall and Giannis and Steve saying cutthroat trout. Brent saying tuna. The correct answer is cutthroat trout. We're not specific. The enough. Bonneville tuna? <laughs> <laughs> now, Brody I, I felt like that one. was easy, but all Stink. of our folks from Montana got that <laughs> one like, right. I can't be tuna just because of yellow. West man. Slope tuna. There are about 15 <laughs> subspecies of cutthroat trout, all of which are native to North America. It's said that the cutthroat's native range is the second biggest among North American trout species, with Lakers being number one. Their historical range stretches from Alaska to New Mexico. Man, you want to know something nuts? What do you got? Um, do I got time for a quick tidbit? Sure. You're the one whose uh, schedule we're on. There's a creek by our fish shack, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is, there's a probably a 25-foot waterfall, mm -hmm. not even 100 yards. From tide line, not even 100 yards from tide line to the waterfall. And there's a population of cuts that live in that. Really? Yeah. That's mm. amazing. Yeah. That was the they coolest live, looking cutthroat ever. They live, like they live between the tide water and that waterfall. And are they above the waterfall as well? I've, never, I've seen any evidence of them. And it's not even like a kind of place. There's a huge oh. plunge pool below uh -huh. a waterfall. Maybe that's some very they special must go out isolated. Into the salt. They must go out into the salt, but like. No, coastal cutthroats. Or all over the northwest. Yeah. Coast. Maybe maybe this one hundred yard stream bed has uh some I think they, they, they go out in the salt, right? right? I mean they have yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. How big wanted. did you just recently find out? Rosie was swimming in there and she said it was full of a bunch of them and Jimmy said there's thirty, forty of them and he went and caught one. It was about That's fun. what hmm. was six, seven inches long. Eight might have was pushing eight. Question seven, <laughs> the topic is conservation. According to the Federal AC Act, the black market demand for this organ is the greatest threat to global bear populations. According to the Federal AC Act, the black market demand for this organ is the greatest threat to global bear populations. We have a very confident room. This may be our first 100 percenter. 
of the game. I could, I, when we get done, I could help you out on that question. Is everybody <laughs> ready? I have questions about, yeah, I have questions could have about been the question. A lot better. Is everybody ready? <laughs> We're in doing a lot of erasing. According to the Federal AC Act, the black market demand for this organ is the greatest threat to global bear populations. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Angela saying gallbladder, gallbladder, gallbladder. Angela has his one word. The entire room said gallbladder. They all got it right. The correct answer is gallbladder. Gallbladders and paws are considered the top reason that bears get poached across the world. Both body parts were at the center of a recent poaching case in Alaska where an unlicensed guide offered clients hunts, bear organs, and prostitutes. You can read that full story on TheMeatEater.com <laughs> titled Illegal Bear Outfitter Offering Prostitution and Gallbladders Busted in Sting Operation. That question could have been improved what do you if got? you had left out organs and said, like, bear parts, because that way you could have created some confusion between the, the paws, paws and, and the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. They would have lost of them. You would have lost some people, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. wouldn't have had 100%. Spencer? They, they, they list both of them, and I'll tell you this. My know, wife organs, didn't get it right. Organ, you said organs. A foot is not an organ. Mm -hmm. So had you gone with I probably would parts. I probably would have picked paw if he said parts. He it would have been a great would've. question. Yeah. I would have gotten it. Some other people would have gotten it wrong. <laughs> could have been. <laughs> to that, to that could have had everything that I like in a question. Spencer, to that catastrophe, <laughs> about six years ago, I was coming out of the George Washington in Virginia grouse hunting. Oh, uh -huh. and I the story. And I thought I saw, it, you don't see any cattle around the foothills where I was coming out of the mountains. And I'm going by with my truck and I just see this, I said, well, it's got to be a dead black Angus cow. I'm like, and what made me turn around, I don't know. It, was, it wasn't quite black, dark out. I backed up, put my headlights on it, and I still couldn't determine what it was. And it was four piled up black bears. Whoa. No paws <laughs> on any of them and all gutted, but still yeah. no meat taken wow. off of it. Like, like, like somebody, exactly what they were doing. And it's a big, mm. big issue in, the Apple, in Virginia's and West Virginia. How's that story go after that? You then called law enforcement? I called the and, DNR and I just mm -hmm. told them where I saw it. I didn't have a, a, a way to mark it. You still I, eating bear meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm contributing to the problem. Question eight, the topic is public lands. Which state's only two national forests are the Chippewa National Forest and Superior National Forest? This is question eight. We will get a scoreboard update from Phil the Engineer after this. The topic is public lands. Which state's only two national forests are the Chippewa National Forest and Superior National Forest? Steve is confident. No, no, Randall no, no, is not. confident. No, oh. <laughs> I think Steve was made less confident by the rest of the room not having an answer yet. No, 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 no. Okay. No, I got to think for a minute. Randall, do you have this one right? I think so. Okay. I feel pretty good. Is Brody praying or is he right? I... <laughs> He's got the thing right over his eyes. There's a thing. Putting a spell. I can't often. talk about it, but there's a thing I'm thinking about. So, <laughs> That's it. You got it. <laughs> exactly, I've heard him say that many times over the years. Brody, do you think you have an idea about what the well, right answer Well, I've got an idea. <laughs> okay. Has everyone else got an answer? Mm -mm. I need you to name the state that has the Chippewa National Forest and Superior National Forest. Yanni and Brody, you seem to be in agreement. You guys like each other's answers? Uh, Randall and I. He likes my answer, but I don't think it's what he wrote down. Randall and Yanni, I'm sorry. It What's is. It? it is what I wrote down. <laughs> oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, Why you are you guys comparing notes? Because <laughs> we trust each other Honest not to <laughs> change. My board's down. The rest uh -huh. of us don't trust you. My yep. board's down. <clears throat> I can look over shoulders. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. Aww. We have Angela saying Michigan, Ronnie saying Aww. Wisconsin, Corinne saying West Virginia, Brody <laughs> saying Michigan. Randall saying Minnesota, Giannis saying Minnesota, Steve saying Wisconsin, Brent saying Michigan. The correct answer is Minnesota. Oh, yes. The players got it right. I thought Steve was gaming me because he wrote down so fast. No. I was like, it's got to be Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> 
because they Michigan like combined some stuff, man. Right. So well, that plus, was throwing me for Steve, a loop. But then yeah. I went, but I went with Scotty, and I was like, that's not right. You know, and we had the Na- Manistee right in their backyard. Yep. So I knew that that wasn't on but there. But that's now been... part of a broader system. They rolled it into like. To another federal form. It, so now it's a hyphenated. Oh, uh, I got it. It all became like Chippewa, Manistee or oh, something like Manistee that. Oh, Manistee here and or something. The yeah, Superior okay. National Damn Forest it. butts up against Lake Superior and is part of the Boundary Waters the region. Nation, the that? Chippewa National Forest covers 600,000 acres in northern Minnesota, most of which are wetlands. It has the most water of oh, any national God. forest, boasting 13% of all surface water within the entire national forest system. That so still doesn't like seem fair. They're Superior, Wisconsin, and Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. <laughs> That's not a fair question. <laughs> Phil, we have two questions left. Where does the scoreboard stand? Uh, this is one of the better games we've had in a while, but we still have to say goodbye to Brent Reeves, Corinne, yeah. and, uh, uh, Corinne and Angela, who all have three points apiece. <laughs> We're going to uh, start our own club. We've got Steve and Ronnie with five points, and then Randall, Giannis, and Brody are tied up in first place with six points wow. apiece. Two mm-hmm. questions mm-hmm. left. Not anybody, not Brent's. <laughs> but for everybody, that everybody was else. an important <laughs> question, that last question. Question nine. The topic is cooking. This next great question comes to us via Tyler Olson. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. Gordon Ramsay once described this freshwater fish as the cod of the American South. Now you ask a question. Steve about is the going snack. to hate this question because it quotes uh, a famous chef like the Anthony Bourdain one that he well, no. strongly disliked. As long as he didn't say it to Oprah. I don't hate this question at all. Oh, okay. You just, so you didn't like that he said it to Oprah. In talking about something that has nothing to do with, like, you don't hunt butter. <laughs> no, but you, you cook with it. Like, yeah, I know, but it's just stupid. Okay. Gordon Ramsay once described this freshwater fish as the cod of the American South. This is question so, nine. And like down south, so many bur- things are known by nicknames. Now, Ronnie, you, you may be helping out the room no, here. But, I, I mean, so it's like when you say, like, I got trout just, wrong. I, with, I, would, I would just. No, yeah, when I got, <laughs> say I got, for later. I got trout later. wrong because uh-huh. I didn't put cut Save throat. it for later. He always tells us it needs to be <laughs> Well, specific. he did. Yeah, he has not, he has he not specified the degree of specificity we need here. What level of specificity do you have? If you think the answer is tundra swan, you could just put swan. Oh, okay. There we go. That, that's a great little deal there. Thank you. You know, it just came to the top of you my brain here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yep. it's not referencing anything at all. No, nope, it's not. Is everybody ready? Now I am. Go ahead and reveal your answer. We have Angela saying catfish, Ronnie saying crappie, Corinne saying crappie, Brody saying catfish, oh, Randall so saying wrong. catfish, Giannis saying catfish, Steve and Brent saying catfish. The correct answer is catfish. Everyone except for Ronnie and Corinne, who said crappie, got it right. Ramsey made this declaration while filming a show in Oklahoma where he goes noodling for catfish. He likened their taste to cod or halibut and used plenty of expletives to describe their delicious flavor. If you want to learn how to make my favorite recipe for catfish, then watch Jesse Griffith's video on TheMeatEater.com called The Best Beer Battered Fish. Catfish does not I, taste like cod. I'd it's rather nice eat catfish than halibut. Yeah. Phil, we have one question know. left. Right. Did anything change? Uh, nope, nothing changed except now Ronnie is no longer in the yeah. running. Yeah, but we've got Steve with six points. Like Brody, Giannis, and Randall are tied up with seven in first place. <laughs> question 10. Mm. So let me think about this for a second. <laughs> you got to have one very tailored to my area. <laughs> you think you you'd need, throw the founder of bone a every a, game? You need a hell of a bone right now, Steve. I would question like to have you to have Steve's a little pocket full of questions <laughs> that we kind of work out together. Question 10 on the topic Steve's is mom. gear. <laughs> This brand famously ends their commercials with the tagline, I'm Larry Potterfield, thanks for your business. Topic is gear. This brand famously ends their commercials with the tagline, I'm Larry Potterfield, thanks for your business. A confident Steve. Steve, you have this one right. It doesn't look like Yanni and Randall and Brody will get it wrong. Nice guy, that Larry Potterfield. Oh, you know him. Oh, yeah, seems like a nice guy. Okay. 
Potterfield. You can put the screws to you, though. I'm Larry Potterfield. Thanks for your business. I just want to tell people at home who are on the edge of their seats, I did not win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just made a declaration. I mean, I got it right, but I just uh -huh. keep getting on his board. There's it no looks catching. like we There's will no have a three-way tiebreaker with Brody, Randall, and Giannis. You should go out early. There's always no pressure. Does everybody have an <laughs> Let me answer? Get a peek, Randall. What you got down there, <laughs> Ronnie? Do you have this one right? I, I, I oh, believe so. Oh, we're going to tiebreaker. Oh, I I don't have it Can't right. Can't forget about old Larry. Okay, I, at all. But I know exactly what the first mm -hmm. one that shows it. I'll be like, oh yeah, that isn't, one. isn't the villain in in um What a Wonderful Life. What's his last name? Is it Potter or Potter? Yeah, it is. It's yeah, Potter. Potter they named town Potterville in the alternate yeah, universe. Yeah, Potterville. That's right. <laughs> is everybody ready? Yeah, that's not good. Go ahead and reveal oh, your answers. We face. have Angela saying North Face. <laughs> Ronnie saying right. Motel <laughs> Six. <laughs> North Face. <laughs> <laughs> Corinne oh, without an answer. <laughs> Brody <laughs> saying Midway USA. <laughs> Randall and Giannis. And Steve saying Midway USA. Brent saying Massey Ferguson. <laughs> the correct know. answer. <laughs> Is Midway USA. Dude, what if you're trying Midway to find USA? like some ammo or a weird ass gun <laughs> part, mm -hmm. they got it. go yep. to Midway, man. Yep. Potterfield no. founded Midway USA in 1977. Here's a 34 second video I compiled just of him executing his famous commercial tagline. Take it away, Phil. Sorry, guys. It's going great. <laughs> Full well, punch there for Phil, huh? Yeah, I know. It's great. I'm Larry Potterfield with Midway USA. Thanks for your business. For reloading. Hi, I'm Larry Potterfield with Midway USA. Thanks for your business. I'm Larry Potterfield with Midway USA. This way, Thanks for your business. Six things <laughs> it does have that vibe. It's very similar. That's Tom yeah. Yeah. Thanks Same for your business. <laughs> they take customer service. I'm Larry service Potterfield with Midway USA. USA. I got no affiliation. Thanks for your business. I've never heard of it. Hi, I'm Larry Potter. Just keeps going. Well, if you're looking for a weird we ass gun park or esoteric <laughs> ammo, they have no school. Larry, Larry, Larry takes fast where, shipping very where seriously. Is Midway, mm -hmm. USA He'll send you an located. email to tell you. Where are the Iowa? I'm not sure where they're located. Yeah. They don't just have Iowa esoteric stuff. I'm saying, like, I will Iowa. often wind up there when, if you can't find something, you'll find it there. We are going to overtime. Play the drop, Phil. You ain't first, you're last. He said gear. I was like, I think just cut it at if you ain't first, you're last, and then like go into other stuff that's funny. I never liked it. <laughs> hey, Phil, f off, man. The tie breaking topic is conservation, and this question was sent to me by Steve Schwann. According to the Migratory Bird Act, what is the max number of days a state's duck season can be? Mm, that's a good question. Topic is conservation. According to the Migratory Bird Act, what is the max number of days a state's duck season can be? Everyone in the room should play along because if somebody hits it right on the nose, we can add an extra $100 donation to the end of the game. But the only answers that matter for the win are Giannis, Randall, and Brody. Do you know it exactly, Randall? I have no earthly idea. <laughs> Could you repeat that question? According to the Migratory Bird Act, what is the max number of days a state's duck season can be? Yeah, can I tidbit this a little bit? Sure, if our if our well, players I'm out of aren't the game. Uh -huh, okay, don't um, don't help them out too much. That's why you wind up with all these crazy ass like opens closes, opens back up for a weekend, closes, opens cuz they, you know, they got to stay within the parameter. Mhm. Mm is everybody ready? Yanni, how do you feel about your answer? Educated guess. Decent. Brody? If I DOB, mm, can I, think I just win? I we're all going to be like within 30 days. Okay. <laughs> if I DOB, I just win. Right? I hope so. If you hit it right on the nose, no, you don't win, but you'll add a $100 donation. So I'm never wanting to do away with that rule, but now I'd rather <laughs> like it. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers for the win. We have Angela saying 25, <laughs> Ronnie saying 62, Corinne saying oh, wow. 75, Steve saying, is that a 90? Yeah, we'll Steve Brody. saying 90, Brent saying 60. In our three oh. competitors left, we have Brody saying 90, Randall saying 125, Giannis huh? saying 100. One of you is within seven days of the correct answer. Brody is. The correct answer is 107 days making Giannis oh, our winner. Goodness gracious. Oh, I'm, I'm back, winner. baby! I'm back, baby! I'm back! 
<laughs> Utah, <laughs> Utah there, is the ass. closest to hitting that season with a season Damn. that's 106 what a days long. Mm, that was what a game. Wow. Good I'm job, guys. I'm that way. I gotta go to my notes. It's been so long, I can't remember a single so conservation <laughs> organization. So I got a couple of them uh, written down here. Give Again, me a, give me a second. Utah a is the closest to hitting that. Their season is 106 days long, which is one day short of the maximum oh. length. Yeah, I was thinking like average. I just wasn't thinking maximum. Yanni, as the winner with what eight correct answers and the tie-breaking correct answer, you get to choose where the five hundred dollar donation goes. What's it gonna be? Uh, I'm still trying to find it in my notes. Okay, give me just a second. Gosh, got any oh. hints for us? What's got to do with? <laughs> Phil, can you play the uh, Larry Potter field? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few more runs on that, Bill. Yeah. Uh, oh, the one I had written down, I already used. Okay, good use of time. Um, what are we going to go with? Let's go with uh, the uh, National Deer Alliance. Okay, what do you like about them, Yanni? Oh, That's just, a surprise I, to me. I've I just wouldn't... been, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to use that term, but I've been all in mm -hmm. recently on habitat management because mm -hmm. of that little project I got going on in Wisconsin. And so I've been going a lot, lot spending some time reading on what they put out there about improving my habitat in Wisconsin. So God, it was a I good, appreciate clean it. Win, man. You slugged it out against all the bone throwing. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> slugged it out. Comes in the end. Oh, and I thought I'd I had been chased by a Caucasian shepherd within the last <laughs> year or six months, and that dog wasn't quite, mm -hmm. look, not exactly like the chow chow, but pretty yep. close. Yeah, but yeah. you got Minnesota and no one else did. Yeah, just I slug it out. Oh, you did? Crying, man. You did? He just kept, he stayed in there, kept mm -hmm. scored early, and kept winning, yep. man. Join us next time for more Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins.